a candidate from the same party. Very well. Thank you so much, Fred. Fred Tete Jabano is the head of Current Affairs Production here at 97.3 City FM and Channel One Television. Let's still stay on this matter and go over the phone lines to speak to Mavis Zupork Dome. She is a senior research analyst at CDD. Good evening and thank you so much for joining us. Good evening and good evening to everyone. Good to have you. Now, before we even get into the key findings uh, for this particular report, run us through the methodology uh, for the survey and the period within which data was collected. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, Afrobarometer is a non-partisan pan-African uh, survey network. It started as a project in 1999 and is now um, an institution since five years now. But uh, CDD Ghana is a core partner managing Anglophone, West Africa, North Africa, and some island countries, as well as a national partner when it comes to Afrobarometer surveys. And I've been conducting Af uh, surveys for Afrobarometer since round one, that is 1999. Ghana is in the 10th round. The methodology has always been a nationally representative sample that is used for the service and it looks at uh, adult citizens interviews after that that is uh, 18 years and above interviews are conducted face to face and then the sample size for ghana since um, round five that is uh, 19 uh, 2014 has been um, 2400 that yields a margin of error plus or minus two percentage points at a 95 percent confidence interval. The questions used are standardized across all the countries. It allows for comparison across countries as well as across years, various rounds of the survey. Countries are able to add questions to it specific to each round, what policy issues are going on in the country that they, they want to add the survey questions. And this year we added a few things on the elections on it. So for this for this year, data was collected in August for Ghana. Very well. But um, uh, with the findings that you made, no surprises here are there, uh, despite the fact that unemployment this time round for round 10 uh, is stopping the list of priorities. No, no, no surprising. Not, not surprising, and un unemployment still not surprising, because unemployment have always uh, been mentioned, if you look at over the years, unemployment is one of the things that have always been mentioned. It's mostly either among the top three or the top five priorities of Ghanaians that they want government to address. So among the top three, it has been mentioned since um, 2008, if you look at it from there, it has been mentioned like um, this will be the fifth time it's in fact, not fit. Uh, that will be seventh time it has come up. It has been the first, the top uh, policy priority problem in 2017, 2012, and then 2024. So unemployment is not so new either uh, as an issue that citizens want government to address. I uh, would also <clears throat> add that uh, the not surprising part again is the number of people who, or the, the 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 group of people who really think unemployment is an issue. If you look at it, that is among the youth, um, youth uh, between 18 and 25, and youth between 26 and 35. Unemployment is their most policy priority problem that they want government to address. If you look at it uh, across education, yes, those who are more educated from secondary, above secondary, post secondary to post secondary, unemployment is their most uh, prioritized need. It's no different when it comes to gender, male, female, they want unemployment. And it is the most top priority problem in the urban areas. In contrast, we have in the rural areas infrastructure being the most uh, important problem for citizens that they want the government to address. Yeah. Right. I see democracy and political rights sitting in the bottom three 
And bearing in mind that this is an election year and how close we are to the polls in December, um, is this worrying at all? Not at all. If you look at um, our last week's findings that we released on, um, for instance, whether the elections was perceived free and fair, if you look at whether uh, vote intimidation, um, if you look at, um, so for instance, whether the previous elections, the previous elections were free and fair, about 60% said the elections were free, completely free and fair or free and fair with minor problems. If you look at voter intimidation, whether um, citizens feel that uh, they'll be victim of political intimidation, you have as high as almost 9 in 10 saying they are not uh, afraid at all. If you also look at whether they'll think about a uh, secret ballot, whether somebody would find out what the, whom they voted for, um, 18, 10, that's 83% says that not at all or not likely. If you look at um, we having um, support for elections is still very high. Support, support for multi-party is still very high. So with that, I feel citizens still support elections and more support our democracy and, and feel they, they have um, their political rights are not infringed. In any way, though, we see um, de declining voter apathy, um, voter apathy about 16%, and those who say they will not, they will not uh, refuse to even disclose about 28%. If you, look, if you put those two percentages there, that is high of among people who may not want to go out and vote. But it's not because of uh, they being afraid or they don't have the political right. Maybe it's more of even asserting their political right. Or it, it protests kind of to say things are not going well, so why continue voting? There are a lot of factors uh, that could contribute to that. But I, I, do, I don't think our democracy is in the space where citizens will feel they, they don't have enough political rights and they want government to put it at first. Of course, it's also an issue and it has been listed among, but so compared to other issues, it's not on the top. Like, Let's look at some specifics in the report. And um, I, I get a sense that there's a general agreement for some of the, the, the policies or initiatives by the government uh, to be continued by the next government, whichever party that wins. Take free SHS, yeah. for example. I'm seeing that 85% strongly agree that uh, the next government should retain it. Uh, if you look at planting and rent for food uh, and jobs, uh, also about 81% uh, agreeing that it should be retained. What was the specific question that you put to these respondents and uh, what answers were you looking to derive? So we, we have had uh, various government, we have had various government introduce uh, policies and uh, this round result is uh, it was an opportunity to ask. We have asked in one way or another in other surveys, even our pre-election and post-election, about uh, how they read the government-specific uh, policies that they have put in place and if they feel they should be abolished or not. So in this round, this year, in an election year, and we don't know who will win, the question is what is under the of the man when it comes to policies that are ongoing? So we wanted to know Ghanaians about that. Our question was just very simple. Regardless of which party wins the 2024 20, elect, national elections, um, the next government should continue to implement the following initiative. Or well, you have not heard about them to say, then we list the initiative. So where respondents have not heard enough about the initiatives to say they 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 are they are not obliged to answer. But where they have heard enough and they can, they have an opinion formed about it, then they tell us whether they agree that it should be continued or not. So basically, that was just the question. The Very well. The least, the least one that citizens want government, um, citizens want to, want to see is a electronic uh, transaction that's e levy. Only 17% say that they want to see it coming. So we have a huge majority of 79. That's about 8 in 10 saying they do not want the next government, whoever the next government is to continue. 
Right. L- let's look at the citizens' assessment of uh, economic and living conditions. Uh, you, you sought to find out uh, from respondents if the country was going in the right direction. Kindly run us through what the findings were, uh, particularly regarding this one, whether or not the country was going in the right direction. Right. So it's, it's, it's one of the standard questions that we asked over the years. And the question basically asks is, would you say the country is going in the wrong or right direction? And students will choose which um, they think is the case. So we have 82% saying that the country is going in the wrong direction in 2024. This is a decline from 87% in 24, 2022 that said the country is going in the wrong direction. But if you look at it across time, uh, that would be that is like 12 year period, then we have about 65% um, increase in the number of citizens who say that the country is going in the, the wrong direction. This should be worse. Very well. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Mavis uh, Zupok Dome, we're so grateful for your time. Mavis is a senior research analyst at uh, CDD.